this is my follow up video to my previous video on Bix HD test. So as you all know I made a Bix HD test video on uh, that was held on 23rd of September. So since I was selected I decided to make this follow up video that would address some of the concerns and questions that were posted by my viewers. And so let's begin by looking, taking a look at uh, the bits syllabus and I promise you that if you follow my instructions to the letter, you will get selected in bits HD test. So first we go to bits admission. Then we go to the important dates. So the second iteration results were announced on 7th of October and the third iteration results will be announced on 13th. So these are the important dates and I was selected via Bits HD on 7th um, of on the 1st of October. So the first iteration was actually via gate and only through gate and that was announced on 20th of August. The second iteration was on the basis of bits HD test and on the basis of gate. So whichever um, was your highest score that will be used for the bit that will be used for admission to bits. So for me that was bits HD and the second iteration was and I was selected in the second iteration. So let's go take a look at the syllabus. For that we will go to the brochure. Okay, now here are the details of the test. So there was one test that was of maths. The second test will be of your uh, engineering discipline. And the third test, if you opt for it, will be of software systems. So first of all, let's go take a look at the maths syllabus. So the core mathematics syllabus is actually from class 11th and 12th. This is more of um, the engineering syllabus and not specifically from computer science mathematics. So this includes calculus, complex variables, differential equations. These um, things will, you will not find in gate syllabus for CS. So you will have to prepare for calculus and uh, complex variables, differential equations as a separate topic. So for me, I had already studied calculus and I remember calculus, a lot of calculus from uh, 11th and 12th. As for complex variables, there were a few questions from both calculus and complex variables, but it was really nothing that you cannot do on your own. If you don't remember these concepts of calculus, complex and uh, differential equations, then you should brush up your um, then you should brush up your concepts before going to the exam. Since I basically knew these concepts, so I just brushed them up lightly and went to take my exam. Now, probability and statistics, numerical methods, and linear algebra. These are not really as difficult as they are asked in GATE. So the whole mathematics syllabus is actually quite diverse and the level of questions is not as difficult as in as it is in GATE, but since the topics covered are so diverse, you will have to prepare um, in a way that is different from GATE. Now, if we look at the computer science syllabus. Oh, by the way, we also have English and um, reasoning. Now, you will not have to prepare for English and reasoning as a separate topic. Save your time on that one. Do not prepare for English and logical reasoning. And attempt questions on English really carefully because many of the questions on the English test were actually quite ambiguous. So you might think that one of these op options is true, but it might be that they think that another option is true and vice versa. So you have to attempt 
the uh, English test with utmost carefulness. Now going to the computer science syllabus. Here we have discrete mathematics. Now discrete mathematics is and logic. Discrete mathematics and logic are exactly as they are covered in gate. But they are since they are in the computer science uh, test and not in mathematics test. So you won't have to worry about the mathematics part of it. Only a few questions will be asked from discrete maths. And in my case, really not many. I don't even think there was a single question from discrete mathematics in my set of questions. Now, the other things that, um, that are asked is theory of computation, data structures. We have design and analysis of algorithms. A couple of things that are different from gate syllabus might be digital electronics and microprocessors. For example, they did ask a question about uh, an Intel processor and its instruction set architecture. Now they did not specify which Intel processor, they did not really specify anything that was an ambiguous question. So I'd rather advise you to prepare for uh, instruction set architectures of 8085-8086 and these basic um, CPUs like 8080. And don't really worry about going into too much detail of any of the in any other particular topics because at most there will be one question and you have to really pick and choose which uh, of the questions you will attempt now the computer science syllabus is practically the same as the syllabus for gate so we move on to software systems that will be the third and final test without any breaks if you opt for software systems so moving on to software systems syllabus. Now software systems is almost 60% of syllabus of software systems is based on C programming language. So if you are proficient in programming in C, you'll easily breeze through 60% of the questions in the software systems test. Now for preparing for C programming, I will I suggest you go through this book. I suggest you go through this C programming language book by Brian Kernighan and Dennis Ritchie. This is a really cheap book. You will find it in um, on Flipkart or Amazon or any local shop. This is at most about 200 rupees and this is the finest book on the C programming language. Also you can follow my lectures on YouTube which are uh, which are basically based on this book. So you can follow those lectures and you can follow this book as well or you can read this book and on the topics which you don't understand or which you need further explanation of you can watch my videos now 60% of your syllabus will be covered with this book for the rest 40% now for the rest of the syllabus we have object oriented programming and software engineering now for object oriented programming you need to understand a few things such as design patterns, architectural design, object-oriented design. Now the way I prepared for these things was by going through um, a few courses on LinkedIn Learning. LinkedIn Learning or lynda.com as it was previously called is, um, is a subsidiary of LinkedIn and LinkedIn Learning has many lectures. You can also find lectures on these things on um, YouTube that are free but LinkedIn Learning and we say we can say Udemy and several other or you can also look up on your Coursera or edX if you have time you can also read and if you have time you can also read this book this is software engineering by Roger Pressman this will cover everything you need to know about the rest um, let's say 20% of the syllabus so we have now covered about 80% of the syllabus now for the rest 20% that is database systems and core systems now for database systems you do not need to study anything separately if you are already preparing for CS and for core systems 
that part is basically so easy that you don't even need to prepare for it if you already have a basic understanding of networks and logic so basically they have clumped the whole um, parts and the important parts of cs syllabus into a tiny fraction of the uh, software system syllabus you don't need to separately you don't need to separately invest a lot of time in core systems part of the syllabus and you don't need to separately invest a lot of time in the database systems part of the syllabus just cover and thoroughly cover 60% of the syllabus um, 60 to 80 percent of the syllabus and you will easily breeze through with the software systems test now I will tell you my marks so since I already teach C programming on my channel I already had I was already prepared for software systems test so frankly I did not study for bits HD um, maybe a couple of weeks revision is uh, all that I needed so I, started, I, uh, my, I scored 60 out of 150 in software systems test and 53 out of 90 in maths test. Since I did not really um, revised for CS test, I did not score really well. I was selected for software systems branch at Pilani campus in the first round itself. So, Scoring above 50% will surely guarantee you a seat at the Pilani campus in the software systems branch. Now, if you are preparing for GATE, which I did, and which I did, but GATE is but GATE was held at uh, in February this year. Since 2020 has been anything but a normal year, BITS HD was postponed time and again, and it was finally held and held, uh, held in September. So there was a gap of many months and I had forgotten a lot of concepts uh, that were covered in GATE so I did not really revise them and hence I did not really attempt CS part that much but on a normal year there are not there are not many months in between bits and uh, GATE so I think you can easily score a lot more in CS part of the test as well if you are preparing for GATE now is it worth it to drop a year for GATE if uh, this was your first attempt and you were in fourth year of your uh, engineering, I would say it depends on you. It's such a subjective question that I cannot give a one size fits all answer. I would say if you have not studied really well enough in your four years of engineering, you can definitely take a drop year for GATE. But if you do take a drop year, do not waste it at all. Make that year count. That also depends on whether you are going for a job and whether and whether you're going for a job and how are your financial um, conditions right now. So if your financial conditions right now are okay and you can afford fees for coaching, you can take a drop. But then again, I would advise you to study on your own with the help of the internet rather than go for a classroom coaching because that's why um, because that's the way I learned how to learn so it kind of depends on you as well if you like to learn in a classroom environment you can go to a classroom coaching but for me what works personally is if I am right in front of a computer and then I listen to a lecture and then I can rewind it and listen it as many times listen to it as many times as I want for me, that's just the better way to learn. Of course, you should take a look at Gate Overflow. You should definitely read all the um, standard books. If you do need a review of the standard books, you may ask me. I have all the standard books in this um, covered in the CS syllabus. I have shown you two important books for the software systems test. However, do not just depend on the coaching material that is given to you if you are enrolled in a coaching because they really dilute the material down and you will not be able to score well enough in gate if you do if you do study by yourself you will score much better for example i did study on my own for gate and i had scored pretty well enough 
Hopefully this should clear up a lot of confusion about the bits cutoff since bits Pilani does not actually release cutoffs on its uh, website officially. Now one more thing that I would like to bring to your knowledge is that IIT Madras has started uploading weekly lectures for its entrance ex uh, for its entrance test to the online uh, BSc DP exam. So you might want to take a look at online degree at iitmadras.ac.in. Now if we take a look, since October 5th they have started releasing term 1 qualifier course contents. On 2nd of November, after you submit all the graded assignments and you study all the things, you can get a qual uh, qualifier exam hall ticket. And finally the exam will be on 21st and 22nd of November tentatively. So I would suggest you to just go through the uh, qualifier of content, term qualifier con courses. They are not really difficult and if you do set for the uh, qualifier exam, you can opt for, you can opt to not go for the online BSc degree as soon as it starts. You can actually defer your enrollment to a further date. So basically it is like a GATE scorecard. GATE scorecard is valid for three years. So the IIT Madras web, uh, online degree website says that the qualifier exam content, the qualifier exam result is valid for one year. So you can skip up to three terms and the qualifier exam result will still be valid. So it is not necessary that after passing the qualifier exam, you join immediately. So I would suggest you just sit for this qualifier exam and then as and when you please, you can actually enroll into the online BSc degree. So that's all for this video and thank you for watching.